my little seedlings, my name is Toffee and welcome to my channel. So last week I had an absolute whale of a time playing Stardew Valley on stream for the very first time on my channel and oh, oh boy, I had so many questions about the mods that I use because my game is very heavily modded. So today, by a very popular request, I'm going to be sharing with you all the mods that I use on Stardew Valley. Before we jump in, I do just want to mention that some of these mods do require other mods to work properly in the game or to work at all in the game. So if you're using a site like Nexus Mods, it will list the requirement mods that you need for certain mods to work. So just make sure that you're reading what you're downloading and make sure that you have everything you need for it to work so that it doesn't break or crash your game. I think I'm going to start with the landscaping mods first. The mods that affect your environment and how everything kind of looks in the game, arguably the most important, at least to me. So first of all is the recolor that I use and I am using the Stardew Foliage Redone mod and this is my favorite mod of all time. And as the name suggests, it also redoes the foliage, so everything is a lot more detailed. The trees, the bushes are all a lot more detailed. The color palettes have been completely changed to a lot more natural and muted down colors. The grass has been changed, the path color is changed, everything is just a lot more toned down. It kind of has like a dusty aesthetic to the color palette, which I really enjoy. This is my favorite recolor mod of all time. It is a must have for me. I cannot live without it. Unfortunately, the original is no longer up. The mod author unfortunately had to take it down. However, there is still a foliage only version that is up. So next is the reshade that I'm using in conjunction with the recolor and I like to use the natural color reshade. It is not entirely necessary for you to use a reshade as well as a recolor, but I personally really like to use this reshade along with Stardew Foliage Redone because it just mutes the colors down just that little bit extra and I like my colors in Stardew to be very muted. It kind of just makes the color palette a lot more muted, a lot more dusty than it is just with the recolor. So the next three mods are all environmental mods again, and they are to do with the grass. To use Wildflower Grass Field, which just completely redoes all of the grass to make it look that much more aesthetic. All of the grass is completely changed for like every season. No season has the same grass. The color palettes are very nice. They've got pink for spring and blue and purple for summer orange for autumn and then they have like these kind of holly berry style grasses for winter which is very cute i love it very much uh, this is just an essential mod for me it kind of mimics flower fields in a way i guess and then the last grass mod i promise i'm using winter grass which makes it so that the grass survives in the winter if you want grass in the winter like i do to keep it aesthetic this mod is a must have so the next mods are going to be the building overhaul based environmental mods and these are my must-haves because I just like overhauling my town and I am using the Project Yellog Town Overhaul mod and this mod is just one of my essentials at this point. It is not a want, it is a need. It rehauls the whole town, the buildings, it is just beautiful, especially if you like your white, brown, green palettes like I do. This is gonna be a very nice town overhaul mod for you. And if you know Stardew and you are familiar with modding, you would have heard the name Yellog, who is a very popular mod author. And this is basically all of the buildings are done in Yellog style, my favorite style, and they're just so beautiful. All of the buildings are like these white wood kind of exteriors with dark brown roofs. They've all got flowers growing all over them. They've got greenery growing all over them. It also changes the path color if you wish to in the town. You can have dark path or you could have light path, which is very nice. I am personally using the buildings only version because I believe the full version also changes the foliage, which I want my recolor to do. So I use the buildings only version. They also have this style overhaul for both Stardew Valley Expanded and Ridgeside Village. So if you use either of those mods, you can also match the buildings the exact same way with those mods as well which is very nice. Next up is the farm buildings that I am using and of course I had to use Yellog wood buildings. Again, Yellog is just one of my favorite mod authors for Stardew Valley ever. Unfortunately, Yellog has taken down all of their mods from Nexus mods. I think you can still find 
find them on the Neva Stardew Cafe, which is a Korean Stardew Valley Mods site. Again, it just has that white wood aesthetic with the dark wood roof, and then it's got the greenery and the flowers, and everything changes from season to season, so it all is very matchy-matchy. It's very beautiful. I love Yellow Mods, my favourite mod author, personally. This is a must-have building mod, and this is the one that I use. Next, I use the Yellog Wood Craftables, so it rehauls all of the craftables in Yellog style, so it has the same white wood and dark brown kind of aesthetic, and then it's also got more greenery, more flowers on it. It just changes all of the craftables. Not technically necessary, but I like to do everything down to the smallest minute detail, and this is the one that I'm using for my craftables. So the last kind of landscape mod that I'm using is kind of more of a farmhouse interior layout, but I felt like it fit this category more than any other category, and I'm using the seasonal garden farmhouse, which just completely transforms the way that the farmhouse works. You start off with a cabin that looks entirely different, and as you upgrade, it looks entirely different. It's just, it's truly amazing. The layout is super nice and it even has a little rooftop garden when you get to that point of upgrading. It's so good, I have to use this in every playthrough. Again, not necessary if you're not really interested in the interior of your house, but for me, this is what I'm using for my farmhouse interior. The next category is going to be the furniture category, and these are all the furniture mods that I am currently using in my game. So first, we got Cozy Cafe, which is basically, as it suggests, a cafe mod. It adds six new custom machines, which are animated, you get 15 new recipes and a whole furniture set, so you can make a coffee shop in Stardew Valley, basically. It is so cute, so cozy, the colour palette is everything. It has that same white wood and dark wood aesthetic going on. I love the fact that it comes with new machines machines and new recipes. I think it's super interesting. The next furniture mod that I'm using is Emi's Hanging Dried Flowers for custom furniture, and as it suggests, this just adds really pretty hanging flowers. I like to have lots of decorative pieces on the walls in my Stardew Valley houses, and I'm, as you know, a sucker for flowers, so this is what I use for my hanging flower decorations. Next we have one of my favourite furniture packs and this is the industrial furniture set mod. And this has some of my favourite furniture pieces and most used furniture pieces. It comes with so many furniture items and they're all very cute. They have a range of colour palettes. It's kind of mostly neutral with some greens. There's some like blue and red and gold. It's all very cute and as it suggests very industrial but I think it would also work in kind of a cottagecore theme as well. And then another one one of my all-time favourite furniture mods is the Mies and Magimatica country furniture. This set is so cute, it has kind of like, as it suggests, country-esque furniture, but again, it's still in those white, cream, brown palettes, there's some greys. Next is Warm Cozy Fireplace, which basically just recolors the fireplaces to make them look a lot nicer. They have a lot of options to choose from, they have some more rustic options, they have some more modern options, they're all very very cute, I love them all. Some of them even have like decorations on top or shelves above them. They're so cute, I love them. Next is a succulent mod and obviously this isn't necessary furniture mod but you know me, I like my plants. I'm a plant mum. So this mod is very nice. You get two crops and there's also ten craftables which is very nice and they're all adorable. You can put them in a little greenhouse and stuff. So for the kitchen furniture mods, I kind of flip-flop back and forth between two mods. The first one is the industrial kitchen and interior, which obviously matches the industrial furniture set. And this one is very nice, they kind of got black and marble vibes with some wood tones. There's a lot of colour going on in these, very industrial, but also very cute. And then the other one that I like to use is called the chic cute kitchen, which is brown and white and kind of metallic colours, which is also very cute. This is a mo lot more of a cottagecore feel, I think, and the industrial one is obviously a lot more of an industrial feel, but I love them both equally, so I flip-flop back and forth between the two. 
So next is actually a furniture mod, not for your own house, but for every other interior in the game. And this is called Rustic Country Town Interiors. I love this. It changes all of the interiors of all of the houses. Everything is a lot more toned down in color. There's a lot more of a contrast between the colors that are used. Everything is very pretty and you can choose between light wood and dark wood for the rustic country interiors, I believe. And it just helps to make everything look aesthetic on the inside as well as the outside. The next mod redoes all of the wallpaper and flooring options for your farmhouse and this is called Rustic Country Walls and Floors. So again, if you're interested in decorating the interior of your farmhouse, this is a very good mod to use. The last furniture mod that I am using is called Ornamental Garden Furniture and this adds a garden furniture pack to the game. All of the items are so cute. I wish we had more garden themed items in the game. So this is a very nice mod pack and it comes with some statues. There's a pond there's like planters, they even got animated little fountains and uh, there's even a swinging seat. Next I'm going to move on to farmer appearance mods, there's not too many I use because I like to stick to uh, just a couple of my favourites. A lot of the farmer appearance mods that I actually have are from the Neva Stardew Cafe which is actually a Korean website so I'm probably not going to be able to pronounce most of these names correctly but I will have a word document in the description down below to make it easier to find the mods on there as well. So the hair mod that I am using is this one from K Kyunma. I not going to be pronouncing these right at all and they have so many hairstyles they're all cute they have a range of short hairstyles long hairstyles curly straight these are some of my favorite hairstyles in this pack and then the other hair pack that i use because i do use two is from h young and it's this really cute hair pack again they have some updos they have some down hairdos they have some short hairdos everything's very pretty next is the body mod that i'm using for my farmer and this is called the doyun's female body i hope that i'm pronouncing the name correctly and this adds 40 different body options so you can choose which body option you like to use for anyone that does want this pack and did want to know which body mod I'm using. I'm using number six in this pack, which is my favorite. And all of the animations have been redone. The sitting animation has been redone to be a lot cuter. The surprised reaction has been redone to be a lot cuter. It's very adorable. This is a must have. I know it's not a must have for everyone, but I really prefer this body mod uh, compared to the original farmer body. So that's the body mod that I use. Next is one of my favorite farmer appearance mods, and this is Lambiron's oversized sleeves, which as the name suggests, give you super cute oversized sleeves in the game. I love oversized sleeves in real life. So the last farmer appearance mod that I'm using is actually a clothing mod and I use the Rural Outfitters mod. This is my favorite clothing pack. It's nice and simplistic, but there's lots of options. You can change all of the colors of the attire. It's very cute. You have some kind of like winter teddies. You have some overalls. You have some vests. You have some cardigans. It's very, very adorable. This is my go-to clothing pack for my farmer. So the next category is the character category and this is my favorite one to find mods for and download mods for. So the first mod that I use is for the changing of the bachelor and bachelorette portraits and this is a portrait mod by Adore. I love Adore's art style, they are amazing as much as everybody took the mick out of me for long necks. This is my favorite portrait mod ever. The art style is gorgeous, the actual art itself is gorgeous, the characters gorgeous. They have had a complete makeover. They look absolutely stunning. Everybody kind of looks a little bit like a K-pop idol and I love that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> this next mod is a bachelor sprite mod which changes all of the kind of in-game sprites for the bachelors to actually match the adore portraits which is amazing. So we have these ones by Mimemu, I think it's pronounced. I might be wrong but these are by Mimemu. They've changed all of the sprites. They look completely different. They look amazing. They look like K-pop idols. I love them all. They actually have some other options for other NPCs. I don't personally use all of them, but these are the ones that I absolutely do use for the bachelors. 
They've just changed everything to match the adore portraits and I love everything about them. They look so nice now. And then for the Bachelorette sprites, I am using these sprites by Judas. Again, it changes all of the sprites to match the adore portraits, which is very nice, which means the portraits match the sprites. They're very cute. They have Oh, they just look so adorable. I love these sprite mods so very much and I cannot live without them. The portraits, the sprites are a must have for me because I am a very much a character NPC lover in this game. <laughs> Moving away from the Bachelor and Bachelorette mods, I am going to be moving on to the standard NPC mods, the kind of unromanceables, and the portraits that I am using for the NPCs are from Cabbage Hand Pogi, which is on the Neva Stardew Cafe. Um, I believe they have mods for every character, and these are not high definition, these are just pixel art, but they are my favourite pixel art ones, and I use all of these for all of the NPCs. They're very beautiful, they also have some very nice options for the bachelors and bachelorettes if you would prefer to use a pixel art version. For the NPC sprites, I used a bunch of different sprites from a bunch of different creators. I actually found a spreadsheet on the Stardew Cafe which is a pretty good indicator of the sprites that I use for the characters, um, so I'll link that in the Google Doc down below rather than me telling you all of the sprite mods that I'm using because we'd just be here forever so that will be in the Google Doc as well. So next, I don't really know that they can be classed as character mods, but let's say these are animal mods. This is like a subsection of this category because all of the animal mods that I use are all from Elle, uh, who is Juni mods on Nexus, and you have Elle's cat replacements, Elle's dog replacements, Elle's barn animals, coop animals, and also town animals. These are all of my favorite animal replacement mods. Luckily, they are all from the same person, so it's pretty easy to find. Moving on from the characters and the animals, I'm going to be going into the item category. So I'm only using a few item mods. I didn't want to overhaul all of the items completely. So the first item mod that I'm using is called Duck Crab Pot. Basically, it turns these ugly crab pots, these plain crab pots, into ducks. And you can have different versions of ducks. You can have the vanilla duck, you can have a yellow duck, and you can have a white duck. And it's really cute because they like, they're animated so they dip down for water. The next item mod that I'm using is called Pigeon Mailbox, which adds a bunch of different options for mailboxes. They're all very cute. You actually have a pigeon on a little stand. It's kind of more like a table, which is almost kind of old schooly. You have another bird one, you have a actual floral overgrown one. You can choose between having them more flowery and overgrown or less flowery and overgrown. Next is Rose Dryad's Plant Sprinklers. I am never really a fan of the sprinklers in the game. As much as they are useful, I also find them very unesthetically pleasing. <laughs> so this mod changes the way that the sprinklers look and it turns them into little flowers or little sprouts or little mushrooms. You can configure each different level of sprinkler to whatever different icon you want them to look like. And the last item mod that I'm using is called Prettier Scarecrows, which as it suggests, makes all the scarecrows a lot cuter, a lot more adorable. So that was the last of my visual aesthetic mods that I'm using on my Stardew game. I hope that this was helpful. I will have a Google Doc linked in the description down below with the links to all of these mods to make it a little bit easier. But yeah, these are the mods that I am currently using to make my game visually pretty. I think I might also do a couple more mod videos for like essential mods and gameplay mods because I love gameplay mods as well. There are a lot of gameplay mods. But um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye!